uh, arrow shows the zygomatical zygoma infraorbital rim fracture. You can see that's also displayed in the medially as a fracture extending across the orbital floor. It's coming through the infraorbital nerve and goes to the buttress there, ends there. It's not displaced severely, by about 5 6 millimeters at most. Uh, this is a coronal view. I've taken the right view to show you the amount of fracture that you can see. So we're just going to reduce this and fix it. I'm going to be using a subconjunctival approach for this. I also may be using a lateral canthopexy to reach the zygomatical frontal area. So we need a subconjunctival approach for the infraorbital fracture and the orbital fold fracture. Got the retractor there in place. Just simply going down, okay. <coughs> Agree. Yeah? So this here. Yeah. Okay, I think you can see the fracture now. Go on to the infraorbital rim. And that's the floor that I'm raising now. So it's this point which is fractured. I've got my copper malleable retracting the orbital content and the orbit. You can see there the fracture is moving. I already reduced it a bit. Still moving a lot. So I'm probably going to raise a little bit more uh, medially. Yeah, you can see that the entire segment is now coming into view. So this is a good approach for tiny fractures like this. But even small fractures like this can leave with a residual deformity because this patient has a blower type of a fracture. You can see there how it's shattered there. And it's uh, okay. And there's another floor. I want to the floor now. Okay. Raise a little bit down here. So fracture there. Okay. If you take one of the detectors out, just put one this side when I estimate this. You have to take it out. Okay. The advantage of this approach is it's literally scarless. This is transconjunctival. So I'll just show you what it means. Take it out. You see that? And this is the eyelid. So we're going in like this. This is to the conjunctiva. And then I've gone the tarsal. That's the vital you can do. That's the vital floor. Okay, retractor now. So I've exposed the entire fracture now. I'll show you uh, in a moment. So suction. Hope you can see it. This is moving. You see that the orbital floor, and this is the other end of the fracture. Put this here, please. Yeah. So that's one end of the fracture there. This is the other end of the fracture, and that's the posterior limit of the fracture on the floor. So it's like a nice window fracture with the orbital rim fracture so this is an impure blowout so in these kind of cases what i like to do is you see that there's one fracture here i hope you can see yeah that's nicely seen now so one fracture here another fracture there this is a center segment that's moved down but these kind of fractures you definitely have to reduce and reconstruct so to say otherwise the orbital volume reduces by way of herniation of fat and fibrosis, resulting eventually in anophthalmosis, which is not so nice. This patient didn't have diplopia, didn't have any other issues, but I'm doing this because there was a five millimeter displacement on the scan. So now I'm gonna put a nice mesh. The mesh is gonna sit on stable bone. This is stable solid bone, stable solid bone, totally fractured, mobile, loose bone. That I'm gonna use the mesh, it's gonna bridge these two. 
really difficult for me to take the video and show you everything give me the mesh now i'm going to show you what mesh yeah that's the mesh that i got we're going to use this mesh uh like in a longitudinal fashion after we finish this video i'm going to adapt this so that two screws would go on either side and this would go in into the uh, the orbital floor thank you so i've just done a subconjunctival approach for an infraorbital floor reconstruction this was a pure sorry was an in, impure blowout because the floor was also damaged i'm going to show you floor and the rim so now this is what you see okay so that's the implant i've used i'm going to put this in the right place and show you the fracture okay so you can see that this bone here is formed that's the infrabital rim lateral aspect infrabital rim medial aspect is also formed but in between there was a centimeter long bone that was fractured and also displaced inferior laterally and you can see that now just beneath the mesh that i've placed in so i'm going to show you how the reconstruction has been done that's the orbital floor on this side the normal one which is not fractured likewise i've done the dissection to this side normal one and this implant is bridging i've, I've actually fashioned it myself same coverage for both sides and here i've made it bend like the infraorbital rim can you see that the patient can't feel it it's just the normal anatomy that you readapted this no computer cd cat cam nothing but this is being done with a mesh and this is because you have the anatomy that's available and this is going to solve the problem of any anophthalmosis of whatever the patient might develop there's going to be no scar it's a very nice approach needs some amount of expertise and experience to do it but you see all the way down we reconstructed the orbital flow even if the defect is just a centimeter but you see it's quite long it's about 3.54 cm long that can cause herniation of the orbital content especially the fat into the sinus which is just beneath this that's a hollow cavity so that will easily take in fat from the orbit and that once it happens it reduces the volume of the orbit or the orbital cavity and thus results in the condition of anophthalmosis or a small eye okay now we just have to suture i'm going to suture this in two or three layers okay thank you so just on the suturing now i don't put many sutures we just put two there 260 and leave the rest open that's